Good morning, Saints. It's Sunday morning. A little muggy here. We kind of want some rain. Uh, but it, it's Sunday morning. It's time to assemble. If you come on later in the assembly, then this is what is called churching. We're going to church a little bit today. What we're going to do is read in uh, a few things, mostly out of the pastoral epistles. Now, these pastoral epistles that they call them, that's to Timothy and Titus. They are speaking to spiritually mature saints or overseers, those who rule over us, those who are terror unto evil. Romans 13, if you want to go check all that out, that's Romans, That's what Romans 13 speaks about. Uh, overseers. Who, so, uh, although... This is some heavy duty charges. And a babe has to mature into this. But this is where, as a babe, we ought to see as a go, as a mark. And we don't want to miss a mark that we are displayed in, in, in the Word of God. Uh, I, I should never be happy in the state I'm in. I should want to be as Christ. Ever striving to be a follower of God as Christ did and a follower of God as Paul did that follows me as I Christ and uh, to live this not just this life of Ephesians uh, which is a wonderful life I mean but that we need to end up in, in this category in our maturity. Don't mean we'll all be called to pastor or teach, but this is maturity level that we ought to arrive in. Uh, so, we're going to start in what man calls 1 Timothy 6. Uh, let all servants, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their masters worthy of all honor. Okay, let all servants, that's all of us, each member of the body of Christ, let all servants as are under the yoke, and we know what yoke is, count their masters worthy of all honor. Now, that don't just mean because somebody says, hey, I'm a preacher man, I'm a pastor, you need to count them worthy of all honor. Because we remember this, even the ministers of Satan will appear as an angel of light and speak righteousness. So this is where we need to grow up into. Remember, always growing, always growing, always growing. And the only way we can do that is, is if our heart really wants it. God sees that heart. And God, he works that out. Okay, so. Now, let all masters that are under the yoke count their, uh, let all servants all as are under the yoke count their masters worthy of honor. And there's a reason behind it. That the name of God and doctrine be not blasphemed. Now, don't just say one thing. It says, and the name of God be not blasphemed. Whew. Do you know how, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, saints. Do you know how many brothers and sisters, how many servants that are under the yoke are blaspheming the name of God because they're not counting the teachers of the sound doctrine that God called those teachers that teach knowledge and understanding because they like some other theological doctrine, they're blaspheming the name of God. And doctrine be not blasphemed. So we can not just blaspheme the name of God, we can blaspheme doctrine. Sound doctrine. Be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but brethren do service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things, these things teach and exhort. In other words, build the body up in these things through your teaching. Build up the babes and the strong young man. Build up into the spiritual elders that we're supposed to be desiring to be. Build up into the perfecting of the saints. And yes, brothers and sisters, build us up into that perfect saint spoken of in Philippians. 
I'm going to go on. If any man teach otherwise, wow. I, <laughs> if any man teach otherwise. You know, I see today this guy named Papa. Y'all might know him. I don't. Yes. And this is what got me on this. There were some questions asked. The question was this, you know. I'm not even going to, I ain't even going to, I ain't even going to count it worthy to even repeat the question because it was just a foolish question by a so-called teacher and preacher of the Word of God. All I seen was this right here. He was blaspheming the name of God. And he was blaspheming God's doctrine. Like I said, this is Piper, dude. Ah. Uh, These things teach in the door. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. If any man teach otherwise, consent not to wholesome words. Now look, look, look. I'm talking about teachers. If any man teach otherwise. I said, don't be me teachers. And that's why I want a lot of y'all, when I was back on social media, y'all's me me's. Y'all are teaching. Not even knowing what you're doing, you're teaching. Well, we're just spreading the gospel. No, you're teaching. Everyone that reads that absorbs something which might not be aligned up with God. Amen, amen, and shares it, likes it, loves it, and all this stuff. I'm telling you, a lot of people on social media, now y'all listen up, are blaspheming in the name of God. And are blaspheming God's doctrine. Just by these memes that look so nice. So, let's go on with it. And consent not to wholesome words. So, if a teacher, which I admit, Many pastors, if they teach otherwise by God's doctrine, and I go to admonish them, and they don't consent to wholesome words like the Lord of Jesus Christ, and the doctrine, God's doctrine, which is according to godliness, what does it say about them teachers and preachers and pastors? And Brother Ryan, you followed one of them. You know who I'm talking about, that, that one dude that spoke that heretical uh her heretical uh, teaching on it's a shame for a man to have long hair and you following that man he's a liar he ain't no pastor because he can't teach now I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna continue on here he is proud knowing nothing do you hear me saints love thy neighbor they ain't know who the neighbor is your neighbor's everybody you correct them, they won't receive it. I had a guy saying, I was blowing hot air the other day. Because I told him, you need to reread Luke on the parable of a certain Samaritan. And you need to understand who that neighbor is. Well, you're just blowing hot air. I, 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 neighbor, God, the Lord says in Luke, the neighbor's everybody. That ain't, he don't say that nowhere in there. So, he's proud. Knowing nothing. Understand this? Why are you following these people? Why are you liking and sharing their hogwash? But doting about questions. Oh, mercy. You know, this Piper dude asks a lot of questions in his video site. It's called Desiring God. Do not go there. It ain't worth the effort or time. For one thing, if you're not spiritually mature, just don't go there. Hmm. You might get sucked in. Uh but doting about questions. Doting about questions. In other words, that's all he there about is, is questioning, questioning, questioning. Who do we see that in the example of? Oh, 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 the Pharisees. They always question Jesus. And why? Not to learn the truth. They wanted to trap him. They wanted to trap him. They wanted to snare him. They wanted to trick him. They wanted to cause him to stumble. Oh, man. Okay, he's proud of knowing nothing but doting about questions. 
and strifes of words. Strifes of words. I'm going to give you the perfect example. Trinity and oneness. All this strife over Trinity and oneness. Trinity is doctrinal. Oneness is doctrinal. We see three working as one in unity together for one purpose. Three working as one. There you go. As far as I got to go. In unity for one purpose. Strifes over words. How many people have 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 strived over this? Just another one. Dispensation. It's in the Bible. It's called the dispensation of God. They will rebuke the entire doctrine of dispensation because some man screwed it up. Well, there ain't no such thing as dispensation. If you're a dispensationalist, uh, you don't know God's word. You know something? I know it says God has a dispensation. So I got to go with that. Strife over words. See them words. Whereof, whereof, because of that, cometh what? Woo! Come denominations. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> whereof that cometh? Theology. <laughs> excuse me. Whereof cometh? Envy. Strife. Railing. Evil surmising. Brothers and sisters. Do you know envy, strife, really, evil surmisings are part of the people that is described as that who will not, how much saints, who will not inherit the kingdom of God. Whoa. <clears throat> Come on now. Envy, strife, really, evil surmise. <coughs> Perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind and destitute of the truth, supposing they gain the godliness from such, from such, withdraw yourself. That's a charge. Are you withdrawing yourself from them? Are you, are you withdrawing yourself from them and assembling with people that you should be? Are you hanging with people and, and, and liking and loving and sharing that you shouldn't be? And, and not doing the same to the people who you should be. Okay. From such withdraw yourself. So who's in sin today? Who needs to repent and clear themselves of this matter? Huh? Might be self-examination time. It just might be. It might be time to just clear out the friends list on your social media side. Hey, just saying, they can always follow you. If they really want to see what you got to say, they can always follow you. Don't mean that you got to see that stuff that keeps flooding. Mm -mm. Uh, so, that is part one of the speakings. Uh, now we're going to go to Second Timothy. And what man calls two? Flee also useful lust, but follow. Oh. <coughs> what man calls verse 22? Flee also. Now, it says also, so you might want to go and read above that. Flee also useful lust. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, and them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Okay, wait, 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 wait. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, and peace. Them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. A lot of people, I'm just going to be honest with you, we know what you say. They're, I'm telling you, if you, it, it, there's a lot that has not called on the Lord of pure heart. There's worldly sorrow. Remember me speaking on that? Another one in Piper questions. Whew, man, dude. Okay, here, here we go. Though. Here's a charge that we need to understand. Even the babes, you need to understand this because this is where you need to grow up to. This is where you need to grow up to. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Okay, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid. So we need to avoid foolish questions, and we need to avoid unlearned questions. 
knowing that they do gender strife. And a servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle, apt to teach, patient, meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Talking about saints who oppose himself. Can a saint oppose himself? Absolutely. If God preventually will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, and they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Wow. Brothers and sisters, we need y'all need to listen to this, and if you got people that's in the snare of the devil, you need to uh, Speak to them. And if you ain't got the gall to speak to them, share this with them. Because I guarantee you, I'll speak to them about it. I don't want no saints to be caught up in the snare of the devil. I want them to recover themselves through the repentance that God gives us. And so they will grow up and stop opposing themselves. So, let's go back to the topic. Avoid foolish questions. Wow. The world said there ain't no such thing. God says there is, and we should avoid it. Now remember, these are spiritually mature elders. These are the overseers. You know why I folks avoid a foolish question? It takes up my time in, in speaking the truth and the gospel. If I get into a 30-minute conversation on a foolish question, and like I said, this is something that even I still have to open. I, this is, this is the, let me tell you something right here. I can't stand a foolish question. Even in my flesh, I could not stand a stupid question. And I'd want to <laughs> sit right to wrong. And now as a teacher, I still want to do that. I want to write to wrong. But some of them. This is where the discerning comes in. Okay, what is actually a foolish question? But I had to go to God on that one, too. Y'all heard me. I've gone to God on a lot of questions. What the heck is a foolish question? I thought, how can a question be foolish? <coughs> Here's how we come to learn what a foolish question is. They gender strife. Now, brothers and sisters, on social media, have you witnessed a foolish question? A question asked that gender strife. How about this? Can a saint lose their salvation? Or can, can a Christian lose their salvation? Oh, boy, I used to get caught up in that one a lot. Can a Christian get caught up and uh, lose their salvation? Saints, would you consider that a foolish question? Well, let's see. The defining of a foolish question is a question that genders strifes. And that question put out on social media is a, a number, of, I'm talking about in the top five of the most foolish questions. Because everything you see after that is 99% strife. You know any people like that? You know he said he spoke to, remember, what's he, uh, let's go back over here. What was this, what, what did he say over here? Oh, oh, from such withdraw yourself. From such withdraw yourself. Okay, now, an unlearned question. But well, now, see, now, here's a toughie. I know a lot of folks have got unlearned questions. And I do my best to, to help guide them to the Scriptures so they can meditate and dwell on it and get fed on it and become nourished and the Holy Spirit can teach them and give them that, that gift. That spiritual gift that, the, but God says He looks at your heart. Right, now you really don't want it. It's up, man. And you won't get the spiritual gift. God got to look at your heart. Go, there you go. That's the man that wants that spiritual gift. Like, hook him up. Hook the hook him up. Hook my son up. An unlearned question. Wow. So what can an unlearned question be? Oh, here's one. That apostle issue. 
that apostle is she? How many apostles are there? Y'all know this answer to this question. How many are there? So when somebody asks you, like I was asked the other day, well, is Pippin an apostle? That's just an unlearned question. Because really, if this person was an individual in the Word of God, he had already know it. I said, but this is a toughie. And now, this is the thing. That unlearned question on social media generates strife. That unlearned question, somebody come to me directly, one-on-one -on -one and ask it, don't generate no strife. Shouldn't, if the brother really wants to, to understand, and you'll, under, you'll know that within about a minute, if the brother really wants to understand. Because if somebody came to me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to tell them this, go to, and I'm going to give them a scripture, read it and get back with me. Now, see now, see, and in one minute I'm going to know the case. Some of them don't even go. Dealt with that the other day on the parable of certain Samaritan. Okay, let's go to Titus. What man calls three. A faithful saying. Oh, of what man calls eight. A faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Paul was telling Tim, uh, Titus to affirm these things constantly. That's, that's an overseer, constantly. Uh, Peter says, no, I'm in this old best, so I'm going to bring you into remembrance of it daily. Every time I come in contact with you, I'm going to remind you. I'm going to remind you. I'm going to remind you why I do not want you ever to neglect your salvation. I want to see you enter the kingdom of God as a saint. co -heir. With the Lord God. That's, that's, okay. Why do we, uh, why should we remind uh, and confirm them things constantly? That they, which have believed in God, might be careful to maintain good works. Yeah, maintain good works. See, a lot of times, uh, I'll challenge y'all. And, and you know something? It's strictly to provoke you unto good works. And that's what we're called to do. To provoke each other unto good works. I'm trying to provoke you to get into the Word of God. I'm really, and I'm going to tell you something. The best time my wife had in the Bible when she was trying to prove me wrong. On prayer, on neighbor, and on this, all this other junk. Once saved, always saved, all this other junk. When she got in her Bible to prove me wrong with first guy together, she came back. She said, you know, you're 100% right. And then she, she hear something, and she would go in the, in the Bible to prove me wrong because she'd been in, in, around religious folks all her life. She had a lot of purging out to do. Uh, me, not so much. So, these things are good and profitable under man. What, what, what good and profitable under man? Uh, good works. We're called for good works. But now, see, there you go. You know, lost about 75% of the people, maybe even more of the saints, because they told, they've been taught that there's nothing we can do works. Nothing that we can do works that matters to God. There you go. Now, uh, but avoid foolish questions. Here we go again with the foolish questions. What does it say? Avoid. Now, it also says to avoid genealogy. Uh, we don't really deal with that much around here. I do occasionally come up against one or two. And contentions. Avoid contentions. Here, oh, man, dude, this just keeps coming up. The long hair part. The, the hair covers. Or the no head cover. The shorn heads. All that junk. It says, if a man seems to be contentious about these things, these customs that they're trying to bring into the house of God as part of the religious ceremony of worship. Praise God. You've heard them. You've seen them. I deal with them a lot. Those customs, you know what Paul says about them people that are, if they're contentious about these matters, remind them, we have no such customs in the house of God. 
of God. There you go. Okay, let's go on. And striving's about to know. Boy, is that a social media nightmare. Uh, <laughs> well, they are unprofitable and vain. Unprofitable and vain. A waste of time. Don't matter to a hill of beans. Remember earlier? What was this one? Let me go back over here. Let me find my little area. Here. Oh, from such withdraw they sell. Remember? What does it say here? A man that is a heretic that preaches another Jesus, another gospel, all this and other stuff. After the first and second admon admonishing, admonishing, that's correction. After the first and second correction, reject. Remember? Withdraw yourself from them. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinned, being condemned of himself. Why? Because in his, out his mouth, he's blaspheming the name of God. Remember over here, First Timothy. Blaspheming the name of God and as well blaspheming God's doctrine. Reject. Let me ask y'all, are you obedient in this? Are you withdrawing yourself? Are you rejecting these heretics? After, now, wait a minute. After the first and second correction, are you even correcting people? Or are you scared to? I understand if you don't know no better, but if you've been hanging around old brother Andy for a while, you've had plenty of opportunity to contact me, ask questions, and get understanding. I'm here for you. This is why God has placed me here on this. why I'm still old breathing air right now. Because let me tell you something. <coughs> I, my purpose in life, is to make sure every saint that listens to my voice approaches perfection. I can't say you're going to become perfected. I just hope you take a step to it. Every word that comes out of my mouth in that I speak to you is my process of me becoming perfected. Knowing that he is subverted and sinned of being condemned of himself. Now, these are them ones that spoken of in scriptures. Paul says, I know when I leave, there's going to be them wolves come in, and there's going to be those that come out from among you, saints, and go after making disciples unto themselves. Theologies. Okay, let's go on. <coughs> now, with that, with the pastoral epistles. And in the beginning, I told you, remember, I, I, I said, why? Well, they want to snare people up. Questions. They're, they're, they're for a purpose. They're to snare you. Now, this is the And there's a reason they want to snare you and trip you up. Uh, so they can accuse you. How many times we see that happening to the Lord? Where they'd ask a question. And the Lord's response was basically this. He was uh, avoiding them. What did he say? What, what does the word of God say? Now he prays it as what does the law say? But I'll just make it simple. What does God's instructions say? What does the word of God say? Because, see, then you have to say something. Well, I don't know. Because if you can't answer me, see, now we got a different conversation going on to each other. That's why I tell some people, hey, you need to go and reread this and read it slow. Oh, brother, Travis out there had a question one day, wasn't and, and, and it was... Explain to me Romans 13. 
And I said, okay, this is how I'm going to explain it to you. Read it to me. We was on this uh, social media video master so I could see him, and he could see me. I said, read it to me slow. When he started reading Romans 13, and when he got down to a certain description of those people, I said, okay, does that, who does that describe? He said, sure don't describe man's government. And I asked him a few questions. He looked at it, and he said, I should have seen that a long time ago. I didn't answer his questions. He answered his question himself. That's a good teacher. Nippy! Hold up a minute. Nippy, get over here in the yard! Now! My dog. So, avoiding foolish and unlearned questions. Not an easy thing to do. A needful thing to do. Damn! Come on! How do we recognize the foolish and unlearned questions? They are the ones spoken, and they you, you, you see it over and over and over and over again. They generate strife. There you go. Somebody asked me one time, Brother Andy, what's the foolish question? There you go. Go back and read over what, I, what we talked about today. And you'll... <clears throat> begin to get an understanding of a, the defilement, God's defilement, hush up, baby, on a foolish question. What? what? I'm sorry, you're not going over. Waste my little one. Uh, what God defines a foolish question as, and even an unlearned question. So, like I said, hey, brothers and sisters, I still, this is something I have to, I have to overcome this flesh. Because sometimes I don't want to avoid them. And sometimes I don't. And I got to go, I, 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 and I'll, I'll, I'll get into it, and I'll see it. God will chastise me. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I've even gone back into the needle. Just that way, there's no, uh-uh, just get out of it. So this is a pot that we need to grow in spiritually. This is a snare. Remember that talking about that snare and people that are are, are, are hurting themselves uh, because they've been snared, uh, and this happens a lot on social media. Uh, yes, that that book facey thing and 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 T Witter and, and all that stuff. I'm telling you, man, the devil's got more traps out there. Corner got oats. Hey, brothers and sisters, I love y'all as always. Praying for you for those things in Naples. And, and y'all have a happy Sunday, and I hope you enjoy churching with me.